tying a little panfish fly today. This is called the gill killer. If you saw a panfish fly I did uh, the other week called the anorexic, this is another fly that was requested by a gentleman up in northern Indiana. It's a local pattern. They're unable to source that they had that tied these for them uh, is no longer available. So they asked if I could tie some for them. And I decided to do some videos on them so that they could either find somebody or learn to tie them themselves if they want. And I thought it was kind of an interesting pattern. As I said in that video, it's interesting to get these little local patterns that somebody's come up with that do just great. And they know about it and other local people, maybe clubs or something, know about it. But other people don't. So, and this is just a real simple little typical kind of uh, bluegill panfish pattern. It is called the gill killer. At least that's what they call it. This is the one that they asked me to tie, a black one with orange, an orange tail to it. However, having a little bit of fun with this, I decided that, you know, you could really do a lot of different things with this fly. Here's a chartreuse one with orange tail. Everything else is the same, just a different body on this. It'd be kind of fun to even do this with the chartreuse hackle. I also did a olive one, and all of these are the same Tackle, I changed out the legs on these. Same bead, same hook, olive body on that one. And this one's yellow with black legs. Kind of a nice little bumblebee kind of color going there. And then had a little bit of fun if you have ever seen the video I did on the Bitch Creek Nymph. This is kind of the same thing. It's a woven body. <clears throat> I didn't do as great a job, but it's a chartreuse and black woven body. Just kind of fun. It's very simple, basic. Obviously, you can do a lot of different things with it. Different hackles, different body materials, whether it's chenille or dubbed, it's up to you. But that's the gill killer, and I'll get started. Okay, normally I'd start with my hook and the vise. For the gill killer, this is a 3906B in a size six. However, because this has a bead on it, it's a gold bead. I'm using a 532nd diameter gold bead. I have to put the bead on the hook first. Now, in case you've ever, never ever put any beads on hooks, if you have, you already know this, most of your beads are going to have uh, two holes in them. One's a narrow one, and then one is a wide one. The wide one is so that the bead can slide over the bend of the hook and not get hung up on the barb. However, if you smash down the barb, it's generally not going to be an issue anyway. But when you're putting these beads on the hooks, you're always going to put the point into the smaller hole first so that when it slides around on the bend, then that smaller diameter hole is right up behind the eye of the hook. As I said, if you do debarb your hooks, generally it's not going to be an issue. If you ever run into a situation where you're trying to slide a bead like that over um, around the bend of the hook and it's not going, it's getting hung up on that barb, then by all means, go ahead and debarb the hook. So with my bead on and my hook in the vise, I'm going to attach my thread. I'm using a Danville 6 aught in black for this. You can go with something bigger if you want. I just don't want to end up with a lot of bulky thread wraps behind that bead. I'm going to attach my thread about the middle of the hook shank and advance it down to just a little bit past the point of the hook. I'm going to tie in the tail. The tail on this gill killer. 
at least the one that I was requested to tie for these gentlemen, is orange round rubber. So this is a medium round rubber legs in an orange color. I've already separated these into uh, just two of them. And I've cut these probably longer than I need to. They're about an inch and a half long. I'm just gonna leave these together for now. And I'm gonna tie these in, securing these on top of the hook shank, wrapping this down all the way to the end of the shank, just over the barb of the hook. Going back and forth a little bit, I just wanna secure those in, make certain that they're not gonna slide around. I'm gonna advance my thread up to the bead and then back down the hook shank about a half a dozen turns. Oops. Leave, like I said, I'm just going to leave those rubber legs together right now, then they just won't be in my way. For the body on this, it's just a black chenille. I'm using a fine rayon chenille in black. I'm going to tie this in just behind the bead a little bit and advance my thread down. This is simply to make certain that I'm not getting too much bulk along the hook shank in any area so that the body is a little smoother. Now I'm going to go down the hook shank to bind that in and bring my thread back up. Then I can wrap this chenille in. I find that this rayon chenille gets somewhat flat. So I'm going to attach my hackle pliers to this. Twist this up just a little bit to get it a little rounder, a little fuller. I don't have any flat spots in it. And then I'm going to wrap that body in right up to behind the bead. You'll notice that I am pretty much right up to the bead here. I don't want to put in an extra wrap and really, if I wasn't putting anything else in there, I probably would to really squish it up behind that bead. But I need to leave just a little bit of room for a couple wraps of a hackle here. Trimming away the excess, I'm ready for my hackle. I've got a little pen neck here in black that I'm gonna use. And I want to have the barbs on this be about from behind the eye of the hook to the pointer or a little bit longer. I don't need them really long because I'm only putting in two wraps here. I just want to keep this fairly sparse. Isolating the tip, I'll trim the rest of that tip off so I have a little anchor. I'll get two or three wraps in to make certain that that's anchored well. Attaching my hackle pliers. I'll then put two to maybe three wraps. If you want to, you could probably go with three. I'm going to do about two and a half, I think, something like that. Doesn't have to be a lot. You want to, I think you want to keep it a little sparse. And this is part of the reason I use the six aught thread because I didn't want to, if you get too many thread wraps with a larger Thread right behind that bead, it's going to wedge those hackles in a rearward direction and lay them a little flatter, and I don't want that. A couple wraps to secure, three or four turn whip finish. Trim away the excess thread. See, and then these will fluff out nicely right up behind that bead. You just end up with a nice, you know, collar on there that can have a lot of motion in the water. Before I put any head cement on there, I'm going to trim the legs, the, uh, I should say the tail here, the rubber legs. I like to trim these about the length of the, the whole hook. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold these forward and I'm not going to cut them right in front of the eye because I do have a little bit of distance from there to the bend of the hook. So I'm just going to fold them forward and cut out maybe an eighth of an inch past the eye. 
and then I'll split those legs up. Now I'll put a little head cement right behind the bead, let that soak down in there. And our gill killer is complete. simple little fly you could use uh, some other types of hackle you know some grouse or uh, Hungarian partridge might be kind of fun to do but it's just a very very basic little panfish nymph kind of grub fly so that's the gill killer thanks for watching today thanks for joining me at the vice today I hope you learned at least a new pattern if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comments section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help Dressed Irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong.